Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering a question from the textbook of the Pearson's at Excel Pure Mathematics P3 International A Level. And this is um, from Exercise 3D. And this on page 65. And this is question number nine. We got to do question number nine, part A and B. This one of the students has requested for me to answer this question, so I will do so. Now, here we're talking about the um, inverse trig functions, not the reciprocal functions, the inverse trig functions, which are, you know, inverse sine of x, or sometimes known as arc sine of x, arc cosine, arc tan, inverse sine, inverse tan, so on. Right, so now, We've got to prove that for x values between 0 and 1, arc cosine x is equal to arc sine of the square root of 1 minus x squared. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off by saying, let arc cosine x equal theta. Let arc cosine x equals theta, which translates to what we're used to, the inverse cosine of x equals theta. So I want to now express this in terms of x being the subject, okay, in terms of x being the subject, which means that x will equal cosine theta, okay? And some people don't understand, you know, how that becomes this. Well, a nice way to understand it is we can, to get rid of the inverse cosine on x and leave this as x on, on its own, we can take the cosine of this side of the equation, Okay, and if we take the cosine of this side of the equation, we have to take the cosine of the other side of the equation as well. So the cosine and the inverse cosine are inverse functions of each other, and when you put them composite, they cancel each other out. You're left with x equals cosine theta. That's actually what we're doing, in fact. Okay, that's actually what you're doing. So for example, when you are solving an equation where you, you know that the cosine of theta is equal to, say, a half, and you want to find what theta is, we want to get rid of the cosine. And we want to be left with theta. So what do we do? Basically, what, what we're actually doing without you understanding in this way, what actually in reality is taking place, uh, you're not just saying, all right, just take the inverse cosine of this side. What you're doing is you're taking the inverse cosine of both sides because what you do to one side of the equation, you do the same to the other side. That's from the day that you learn algebra. That's exactly what we learned. That's why, for example, you have x plus 6 equals 4. You know, let's... Choose a baby example, x plus 6 equals 10. That, you know, one of the things that I always try to instill in my students, don't say the 6 moves to the other side. No, what you're doing is you're taking away from 6 from this side. Why? Because you want to you be left with x. But whatever you do to one side, you do the same to the other side. You're taking away from 6 from this side as well, so you're left with x equals 4. And I don't like to people to think about this 6 flying over the equal sign and becoming negative. No, you're actually taking 6 from this side. What you do to one side, you do to the other. So the same thing applies here. We want to get rid of the cosine. We want to be left with the angle theta. So what we're doing is we're taking the inverse cosine of this side and the inverse cosine of cosine. It's like, as we know, f inverse of f of x. They cancel each other out, leaving you with x. They kind of undo each other. So you're left here with theta now, which is what we want. But what we do to one side, we also do to the other side. So we find the inverse cosine of a half. And then depending on what, you know, we're looking for degrees or radians, we get our answer. In this case, it will be 60 degrees or if you want, pi over 3 radians. All right. So that's actually the process that's taking place when you're solving a trig equation. You, so the same thing we can think of here. We want to find what x is. All right. So we can say, okay, um, arc cosine x equals theta. So inverse cosine x equals theta. So x equals cosine theta. Okay. Now, um, yeah. So now, so if cosine theta equals x, Okay, what we're going to do now, we, want, we have to show that arc sine x, arc sine, co, arc cosine x is equal to arc sine, the square root of 1 minus x squared. Right? They're the same thing. So what I'm going to do is, I've said that arc cosine x equals theta, so I have to now show that theta is also equal to this. All right? Now, I'm going to draw a right angle triangle. 
You can also do this, by the way, using identities, and I'll show you both ways, actually. Let me start off with the way I prefer. I'm going to draw a right angle triangle. Okay, so um, I'm going to draw a right angle triangle. We know that cosine theta equals x. So we can say cosine theta is equal to x over 1 as a fraction, right? x is like x over 1. So if I call this angle theta, then the cosine of theta, if this is a right angle triangle, would be the adjacent side, which that would be your x, and the hypotenuse would be your 1. So by Pythagoras' theorem, this is going to be the square root of the square of the hypotenuse, which is 1 squared, which is 1, minus the square of the other shorter side, which is x, so it's one, the square root of 1 minus x squared. So from this triangle, we can say that the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is the square root of 1 minus x squared divided by 1. Okay, so that's the sine of theta. So we want to find what the arc sine of theta is. So the arc sine of theta, so we're going to take the, the inverse sine of both sides. Okay, so you have arc sine, okay, of the sine of theta is going to give you arc sine of the square root of 1 minus x squared. So as we mentioned here, this is like inverse sine and sine, they cancel each other out. Remember, arc sine means the same as inverse sine. So we're left here with theta equals the arc sine of the square root of 1 minus x squared. So we have now shown that theta is equal to arc cosine x, and also theta is equal to arc sine, the square root of 1 minus x squared, which is exactly what we had to show. Okay, so those two must be equal to each other. All right, so let me just make a bit more space here. So we have shown here, and in fact, I'm going to make even more space because I'm going to show you the other way as well. Okay, so we have now shown these, this result. So we, we can say that as, we can say as theta is equal to arc cosine x, and we've shown theta is also equal to arc sine of the square root of 1 minus x squared. Therefore, we can say arc cosine x is equal to arc sine of the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay? Now, so that's between x is 0 and 1. Now, if we think about it, between 0 and 1, the cosine curve, the co our cosine curve looks like this. This is minus 1, and this is 1, this is 0, this is pi over 2. Okay, the our cosine curve will carry on going up here. So it will go up to pi. That's our cosine curve. The inverse of the cosine curve looks like this. And the sine curve, its domain starts, its range, sorry, it starts from minus pi over 2. Okay, so it's going to be something like this. So they only will have any intersection between 0 and 1. Okay, in fact, I'm not answering part B here. Let me, let me just finish with part A first. Let me just finish with part A. I'll go to part B later. All right, so now, finishing with part B, what, I'm, what I meant is we can also use identities. Okay, so at this stage, where we, we, once we've got to cosine theta equals x, we've got cosine theta equals x. We know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So we can say sine squared theta plus x squared equals 1. So we can say sine squared theta, sine squared theta, sorry, is equal to 1 minus x squared. So we can say the sine of theta is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. So we can say theta is equal to arc sine of 1 minus x squared square root. Okay, so that's just using identities instead of the triangle. Absolutely fine to use both ways. In fact, the, probably the identities is easier in this case. But I just, I, for some reason, I just like using the triangle. So this is using a right angle triangle. All right, rat. <laughs> Doesn't sound too good. Okay, so um, a right angled triangle. Okay, now, so there we have... Um, how to do part A. Now for part B. It says, give a reason why this result is not true when x is between minus 1 and 0. And as I was just trying to explain a minute ago, I'll just um, draw the 
I'll draw the curve or the, the curve for arc sine and, and sine. Now we should know that the arc sine curve is like the reflection of the sine curve in the line y equals x. So everything that was on the y-axis now goes on the x-axis and vice versa. So the maximum it can go on the y for the sine curve is 1. So the maximum it can go on the x is 1. And the minimum is minus 1. So the minimum is minus 1. Okay. And for it to be, for the sine curve to be a, to the inverse to be a function, we have to limit its, its range. We have to limit its domain, sorry, for it to be a function. So what they do is they limit it between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. All right. So that it doesn't fall back on itself. It doesn't like it. It'll fall back on itself. So that way, if if this is a um, a many to one function, the inverse will be a one to many. So you have to limit it so it's a one to one function. So basically, it won't. We can't have any part falling back on itself. You can't have any x value which gives you two y values. So you have to limit it so it's between minus pi over two and pi over two. So the the sine curve um, goes up to minus pi over two to pi over 2. I'll draw it over here because I need to have more space. So I know that the sine curve will go something like this. The, the, the inverse sine curve will go something like this. Okay, it's, it's going to go something like this. And it stops there. So you can say arc sine of x, its range, is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, but the arc cosine of x, its range, now the, for the same reason the, 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 the sine curve has to be limited, the cosine curve also has to be limited, okay, and they limit it between 0 and pi. So it goes, it goes like this, right? They limit it. Then when you find the inverse, it's going to start from 0 and 1 and pi and minus 1. Okay, so it goes to up to pi. So it goes like this. The cosine curve has this type of shape. I've drawn it a bit like extreme. But yeah, so that's the cosine curve. So we can say the range, okay, so you can say the common range, range for both arc sine and arc cosine is between 0 and 1. Okay, therefore, it cannot be true for true for minus one and zero because between minus one and zero they don't have any common values. The range of this is between zero and between minus pi over two and pi over two between zero and minus one. Here, its range is completely different it's between pi over two and pi. There's no common part to this. There's no common uh, range. Okay. Uh, there's no there's no common part of the range. There is no common range. Okay, so therefore they cannot intersect at all in that region. Okay, so that that's the reason why this is not true for x between minus one and zero. Uh, so that um, hopefully is understandable by you, Mr. Hassan, who asked the question, and anyone else who wants. Uh, to know the solution for it. I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular um, chapter of P3, I will collect together in the playlist that will appear in this region over here. Other questions from this topic of trig functions um, from ch chapter, well, from trig functions in general from P3, you'll find it in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch this video, which will help you to find what you need in my channel in an efficient manner. Thank you for watching and see you soon.